Hello and welcome to this mini webinar about using the Get Ready to Read assessments and other assessments in the kindergarten camps. During this webinar we'll review why we selected the Get Ready to Read and a little bit about some of the other types of assessments that we know are available. Most importantly we're going to focus on how to use the Get Ready to Read effectively. We'll wrap up with a few other ways that you might also try to document growth and activities in your camps in addition to the Get Ready to Read so that you can provide that to students, to parents, and to teachers. So I would like to introduce you to your trainers for the day. Many thanks to Amy O'Shea with Greater United Way of Greater Lafayette who is in her fifth year of providing kindergarten camps there in uh, a couple school systems. And Mary Robb, who is a 20-year teacher, uh, several years with Klondike Elementary in Tippecanoe County Schools, and is in her third year of providing kindergarten camp. So we're so excited to have them both with us today. Amy and Mary will provide some of the best practices in preparing for and administering those pre-literacy assessments, and we'll give you some other tips. So as a reminder, we have provided two other webinars to review the camp design and to give you some ideas in planning your camp. All of the camps funded by Indiana Association of United Ways must maintain certain elements of the basic camp design. This type of project is something that our IAUW Grants Committee and our board are discussing in terms of how United Ways and United Way Fund members can offer a similar program and collect similar, similar measurable metrics statewide while also allowing some local flavor and innovation. One of the required elements for all camps is the use of the Get Ready to Read assessment. We know that this is not the only pre-literacy assessment tool that's out there. We know we've heard from many schools and many teachers that they prefer a different assessment. Um, but what we're asking you to do is to make sure that you use the Get Ready to Read uh, in your camp, even if you choose to use some other assessments or other tools. Also, if your school happens to use the ISTAR KR, we ask that you document this and let us know because there may be some local dialogue about tracking the kindergarten camp children uh, later in kindergarten through the ISTAR KR. That's a much more robust observational tool than what we have available. So at this point, I will uh, turn it over to Amy um, to start talking about the assessment. So why pre-literacy skills? There are lots of tools that communities and schools use to assess kindergarten readiness. Uh, one of those measures looks at pre-literacy skills, which involves research-driven information that a child who recognizes pictures, spoken language, letters, numbers, that those children are gaining the skills needed to be introduced to language or pre-literacy skills. The Get Ready to Read revised assessment has been used in the K-Camp model because it's evidence-based and provides a consistent metric statewide. Um, and it's also quite affordable and quick to administer and score. So we can, we can get our kids through the assessment very quickly at the beginning and end of camp. We certainly know that there might be a better, more comprehensive assessment. It really is just literacy-based. But in a four-week camp model, we need to find a quick and affordable assessment that we could use. Ideally, we would love to see the depth of a strong observational tool like the ISTAR KR but we recognize it's simply not possible during the four-week time period, and we don't always have the resources or additional staff to observe students quite at that level. So we do our best with uh, the ISTAR, or the uh, Get Ready to Read model. Um, here's an example of how we use the scores in Lafayette to measure a few things. Of course, we want to measure the growth of these pre-literacy skills gained in kindergarten camp. But it also helps us identify if we're targeting the most in need in our recruitment. Um, we sometimes look at our scores and, and can reflect on the students that were in camp and say, you know, we didn't have quite as much growth as we did last year, but the student makeup was different. Um, so what, what do we really want to target for our camp recruitment? Um, there are other things we work to measure, and we will talk about that later. So let's talk about um, how to use the Get Ready to Read. I've um, recruited one of our veteran teachers, Mary Robb, to help us describe how to administer that test. 
Um, here locally, we usually for each camp, we, we run about 10 camps a year. And um, locally, we try to have the same person um, do the pre and post test for each of the camps, whether it be a trusted volunteer, sometimes it's United Way staff, um, sometimes it's um, the aide at the camp, or in, in some cases, even a teacher. Um, but we do train those, those folks and make sure that they all understand the purpose of the assessment and how best to use it with the, teach, with the students. Um, so let me go ahead and um, turn it over to Mary, and she can give you an idea of the, uh, the administering the test. So the first picture right there, get ready to read, is the front of the booklet. And then the next, the next little part is the score sheet. So first of all, you need to write the child's first and last name on the score sheet. It works best if you have a clipboard to put the score sheet on, and that way you can hold up the clipboard and the child won't be seeing what you're writing. You want the child to pay attention to the booklet, not what you're doing. Um, sit next, have the child sit next to you in a very quiet area, in a hallway that's quiet or somewhere away from all the other children. Um, use a sample question to make sure that the child knows what to do. Point to the picture in the sample question and say to the child, let's look at the picture. I will ask you a question about them and you point to the picture that is the best answer. Let's try one. Read the statement aloud that appears on the top of the sample question slowly, clearly, and exactly as, as it is written on the booklet. Ask the child to point to the best answer. If the, you think the child does not understand how to answer, you may re-read the, what, what the text says and re say it to the child only for the sample question and then help them answer the question just for the sample question. When you are confident that the child understands what to do, then proceed to the test. Read the statement on the top of the page to the child exactly how it is written again and then go on. Child needs to point to their answer and circle. You circle on the test on your on your clipboard. You circle a one or a zero. So then go to the next. As you look at the next page, this is a ball, and these pictures are zebra, shoe, wall, and leaf. Does ball sound like zebra, shoe, wall, or leaf? Find the one that rhymes with ball. I had to do this question recently with children, and they did not understand this question, so I kept saying it. I might have done it two or three times, and they finally, I didn't tell them the answer. I just kept repeating the exact script, word for word. Okay, what if, there's always what ifs when you work with children. What if the child wants to stop? And I had that happen too. We, and I just say, we just have a few more. Let's try to finish. If the child stops paying attention, take a short break. And we did that also. I just would get up and we'd take a little walk and come right back. And then start with the next unanswered item. What if the child asks for help? Say, try to do it yourself. You can repeat the question and say the exact text, but don't offer any help. What if the child says the answer instead of pointing to it? Can you show me? Have them put their finger on it. Ask them to show you. The child points to more than one picture or changes its answer. Can you pick just one? Have the child redo it and say, can you pick just one? And choose the child's final answer. What if the child says, is this right? Give a vague answer, like you're doing a really good job. And I did that the other night, too. Respond the same way whether the answer is right or wrong. What if the child answers too quickly or points to the picture in the same position every time? Say, take your time. Look at the pictures again before you decide. The child may be tired, so take a little walk again, take a short break, and go right back to the unanswered question. Thanks, Mary. It's always great to have those boots on the ground uh, uh, suggestions. So um, for our camps, we really only do the pre and post test. Um, we don't do that third set of screening. Um, and, and actually, um, this, the screen tool uh, summary form that you see here is provided by Get Ready to Read, but a lot of our schools like to create their own spreadsheet so that they can track it kind of on their own or look for, calculate, you know, percentage increase and so forth. So um, you, can, you can use a screen tool um, or create something on your own. Uh, a lot of our schools actually use um, this for a roundup, or the kindergarten roundup, and that helps us to identify students who would be good candidates for camp. Um, we do like to administer it on the first and second day of camp, and 
at the very, very end, um, generally we try not to do it on the last day just because sometimes we have trouble um, with, with absences. We want to make sure that the kids are assessed, but we try to do it maybe that um, Wednesday, Thursday, if Friday is the last day of camp. Um, we do like to try to do it in an area that is a little bit quieter or the child is more able to focus. And um, I know we always like to have the same person do the beginning and ending testing. So um, it it's usually goes pretty quickly, too, if, if the child does stay on task. Um, and we can usually um, get through them in just a, a five-minute period or so and then move on to the next child. So depending on how... Uh, how rapidly the kids work and uh, how much they stay on task, it can be a pretty quick experience for the child. Right. So, and just as a reminder, um, going back to those, uh, the screening tools, so IUW actually uh, orders these materials for you. So you will receive the manual. You'll receive a spiral-bound booklet, which they call the easel. Um, you'll, that easel contains the 20 questions, both in English and in Spanish. You'll receive score sheets and a master sheet. Uh, but as Amy has suggested, sometimes it's easiest if you either copy the score sheet so that you have the same child on a pre and post test on that clipboard, um, or you can consolidate all of the scores on a master spreadsheet, which is what a lot of camps will do because they'll also keep attendance that way. So just as a reminder, you'll be getting those directly from Pearson. We, you tell us where to ship it, and we ship it to you then. So now I'm going to have um, Amy and Mary tell you a little bit about some of the other ways that the camps are evaluated and assessed and what kinds of things are documented in those camps. Okay, so we do, um, we do have some information about um, awareness of kindergarten readiness in our community. In fact, all of our recruitment um, flyers and posters for um, for our camp also references the kindergarten roundups because that's our number one place that we recruit students from. So we're also trying to get students to attend their kindergarten roundup and families, getting families there. Um, some communities place surveys in the library or articles in the local newspaper to talk about the importance of kindergarten readiness. And um, we love during camp seeing the, um, the many ways that our teachers use action-based learning at camp. And, um, and Mary, why don't you talk about some of the things you do at your camp? Um, I use Dr. Jane's CDs a lot. And um, so the kids come in. When they come in, I have a short group time with them. And we do, um, I have a pointer, a big pointer. And I, have a, I pick a child to point to the letters of the alphabet to start with. And, um, we do an alphabet chart all together, and then we get Dr. Jean on, and we sing uh, alphabet songs. We sing Days of the Week. We sing all kinds of song number songs. Um, and uh, I also get out bean bags with the alphabet on it. So we, there's a song on the Dr. Jean CD that talks about A, and um, when, the, when the child hears the A, they throw the bean bag into the bucket, and then B, C, and so on. Um, I have everybody moving all the time. It's just they love to move, and that when they move, they learn. It seems like they, they just love the movement and the rhyming and all that that goes with it. Um, another thing I do is... Uh, we, for parent involvement, we have a, I have a portfolio, so when the children first start on the first day they come, they write their name, and then on the last day, I have them write their name again, so we see how they progress writing their name. So right away, I know what kids need help with writing their name. So when that IU health volunteer, the community volunteers come in, I say, okay, can you work with this child on this, on their name, on their ABCs, or whatever I see that they're lacking. This helps them get this by this three-week time period. Um, and then I can show the parents when they come in on that Friday of the last day how much they've improved. Um, I also send home a packet of uh, a calendar for the month of July and a little bit of August for them every day to do something with kindergarten readiness so they know what they can work on. I also send home an ABC book that they can work on as the summer keeps going also. Um, when the parents come in, I try to model what I did with the kids um, for their morning meeting, and then uh, the parents get an ABC, uh, ABC that they can do with their child to put it on their refrigerator, and they can work on their ABCs with them as well. That is exactly the ABC that I use, chart that I use. 
That's great, Mary. There is one question I have for you, and that's um, you are seeing the same kids that you might have in camp yes. and then in your kindergarten class. What would you recommend that a kindergarten, te or a kindergarten camp teacher uh, over the summer maybe provide to the teacher that may be at a different school for that student? Because we have a couple communities where it's a number of schools consolidated to one camp. Well, it would be nice to know what they're still lacking, what they need to work on, and provide that to that teacher so they know when that child's coming into their um, classroom that they know exactly that they didn't know their ABCs, that they couldn't write their name, or this is where they progressed for me. And maybe how best to work with that child. Maybe there's some behavior issues that you've worked out how to work with that child because you worked those three weeks. So on the first day of school, they're not saying, oh, my goodness, I don't know what to do with this child. You've okay. had that time. I know that that helps a lot here, that I could tell the other kindergarten teachers, hey, I had him at summer camp. This is what he needs. And right away they got, you know, they knew what to do with him, what, what works and what doesn't. That's great. And could you give one other tip of how to communicate that uh, to the parent? Or if a student sort of knows, can, can get the picture already that they're struggling perhaps a little bit behind their peers, how do you communicate to the student or to the parent? Um, well, that on that Friday, that last day, I would I pull the parent aside and I say, "This is what we're, we've worked on at camp. This is what you need to continue to work on." And that way, for that child, especially when I know that child really needs work on ABC work and so on, I can say, "Here's some. Do you have a computer? This is what I what I would get on. This is the websites I would get on to help him. And these are the letters that that I would really push for him to get to know. And this is how I do it." And maybe I would show them how to do a simple game with them, like concentration, where you put all the letters, you know, on a card and flip it over. Just different games you could play with, you know, just index cards or whatever with letters on it. I would show them how they could write their name out, how we write their name with the uppercase and then lowercase, and how you could cut them apart and then put it back together. Because I had kids that could, didn't know how to put their name in the right order. So I would have little things that I could individually put in those packets that I could go over with that parent when they come. Now, if they don't come to that last night day, I would call them. That's fantastic. Thanks. So then I'm going to have the two of you talk a little bit more while we're on the topic of parents, talking about volunteer and parental engagement and how you track that and what are some so good ideas. Yeah, volunteer and parental engagement are both very important to the success of a kindergarten camp. And there really are so many ways to document the number of volunteers. Um, we always provide to IU Health um, how many volunteers, no, the number of volunteers and the volunteer hours that they have um, contributed. And we also do the same for a couple of churches that we partner with. And can, we can do that with other community organizations. So we generally have um, it broken down from total number of volunteers and volunteer hours and then some subsets of IU Health or churches or other businesses. Um, we do use um, surveys with both our parents and our volunteers here in Lafayette. Um, and that's helped us. It actually, the very first year we did it, um, one of the parent surveys said, we'd like to see a folder come home with the children. And so I thought, oh, we didn't provide them a folder. So then that next year, sure enough, the packet included a folder that they could use for take home. And the teachers like that, too, because it's a good practice to get into for the school year as well. Um, we do obtain photo releases of the children on our application, so at the beginning of camp we know whether or not we are allowed to photograph the students, and um, we, we definitely go in with the camera regularly. I think Mary might get annoyed at how often I bring my camera in, just because um, it's a perfect uh, spot. We have all the photo releases, or at least we know who we have photo releases for, and can avoid those who we are not allowed to take photos of. And um, we use those throughout the year um, for different promotion of camp. We put the pictures on our flyers. You might have seen some in some of Lucinda's webinars. Um, we use them all the time. And um, in terms of documenting new and strengthened partnerships, you may want to highlight these in the media. We always do a media day with our IU Health locally. Or um, even give an award for a congregation, business, organization that provides the most volunteer hours or most support. And um, finally, we work to document the increased school readiness. Of course, we use the Get Ready to Read scores, but we also look for other anecdotal and observational tools. Um, a lot of the teachers, like Mary, can help us provide some of those um, social, emotional, behavioral skills that um, we see. So we, in addition to surveying the parents and volunteers, we always 
want to get really great feedback. We, I know we always do get feedback from the teachers who can say, oh my goodness, I've seen so much growth in this way or that. And um, that's really powerful too when looking for volunteers or businesses to partner with. So um, as you can see, there's many ways that um, your kid camps are making a difference. We know they are here in Tippecanoe County and around the state. Um, and it's such an important program we absolutely love working with. That's great. We've had some great examples around the state where like in Blackford County, the teachers wrote letters that were actually read at a school board meeting. Or in Stark County, the Community Foundation put up a Facebook page just about kindergarten camp and posted activities that they had been doing. So they're, they're just great examples of a way to really bring in those volunteers, parents, businesses, congregations, other partners. We've had a number of sororities get involved and sort of adopt a camp and those are the great models because that's one of the value adds that we offer as United Way in running these camps. So while this webinar is all about um, assessment and trying to document the difference that we're making, we want to just um, explain that uh, there's lots of different ways to document that, give you some tips on how to use the Get Ready to Read and then some other tips on um, other activities that you might do or document. So thank you very much, Amy and Mary. Do you have anything else to share in terms of a great story? Um, I would just want to add, feel free to reach out if you have questions. Um, we're happy to share. Um, of course, being the fifth year we've done this, um, we've learned as we've gone along and are happy to share with any, anyone. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you both so much. This concludes our mini webinar on assessments. We look forward to your Get Ready to Read uh, scores and your kindergarten camps this summer. Thanks so much.